Good afternoon. Welcome to Bethany Evangelical Church in Paisley. We're so glad that you've been able to join us for this online service and we pray that you would know God's blessing on you today as you join with us here. you for another week you've given to us. We're amazed at how many weeks uh, we're now in, over 20 weeks of online services. And Father, as we meet again and as we watch the service today, we just pray for every single person who's watching, either at 12 o'clock on Sunday or throughout the week, wherever they watch it, that they would know your presence upon them. Father, bless us today. 
Be with us, we pray in your precious name. Amen. If there are over 7 billion people on earth, then why do I feel so alone? If there is someone for everyone, then why does it feel like it's just me? If I have friends, then how come I can end up feeling so friendless? If I have family, then why do I sometimes feel like a family of one? These are some of the questions that I've had to ask myself at times, but I have never seemed to get an answer until I look into the Word of God. The truth is, if you know Jesus, 
You are not alone. You are not alone. No matter how many times you have walked by yourself, God says that he will be with you wherever you go. No matter how many times you have fallen and had to pick yourself up, Jesus says that he knows you and that he laid down his life for you. You are not alone. No matter how hard things have gotten, the Bible says that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. You are not alone. No matter how long you've been waiting, Jesus says that he is coming back and until then he has sent his Holy Spirit to live in you. You are not alone. No matter what your situation has turned into, Jesus promises that you can find rest in him. You are not alone. No matter who has deserted you, Jesus says that he will be with you always. You are not alone. But the Bible does show us what loneliness is like. Utter loneliness is what Jesus experienced as he hung on the cross. Loneliness, sin, death, and separation are what he overcame so that we could be with God, so that when we repent and turn to him, we can rest in his presence, so that we can experience his friendship forever.
This week's service will be taken by Ian Cunningham from Leeds and we look forward to what Ian has to share with us today. Hello. What can we learn from this incident in Matthew chapter 14 where Peter walks in water? Jesus has just fed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish when we break into this story. I'm going to use three words to divide my thoughts. Dim, dark, and downfall. So what about dim? Jesus assesses the information and mood of the situation that he is in. John's Gospel in chapter 6 says that some of the crowd intended to come and make Jesus king by force. So Jesus, first of all, removes his disciples from this revolutionary thinking and talk by sending them on a boat trip. He wants to keep them safe. Then he dismisses the crowd. Now imagine some of them left because they had a trek to go back home. Some would have camped down. Others would have thought the show's over. But anyway, Jesus was marching off to pray. And finally, Jesus deals with himself. He brings his own issues to God in prayer. See, the crowd's idea of making him king would derail his father's plan of his journey to the cross to rescue people. The old hymn says, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear, what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. And the Apostle Peter would say later on, cast all your care on him because he cares for you. So we move from the dim to the dark. This is the exciting part of the story. The boat manned by the disciples is in the lake. And the wind and the waves are making headway difficult. I imagine that the euphoria of the disciples as they talked about the miracle as they left the jetty has slipped off the radar now that they are engrossed in the task at hand, staying afloat. Then they saw this figure walking on the sea. Fear gripped them. And they shouted out, it's a ghost. Then they heard the voice they recognised. Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. See, the crisis and problem hadn't gone away. But knowing that Jesus was there cut through the fear and brought reassurance. My friend Wally describes life as a battle. And it is, you consider, illnesses, bereavement, unfairness of situations and so many other things. Jesus never promised his followers free-flowing, problem-free life. He says, in this world you will have trouble. From the Old Testament, in Isaiah 43, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Matthew chapter 28 says, Lo, I am with you always. So we're not saying that God will turn up when you want or in the way you want. But this passage says that Jesus' eyes and his prayers 
were for his disciples and with his disciples. And William MacDonald writes on this passage, the waves that caused them to fear were under his feet. Peter then asks if he can come to Jesus and Jesus says, come. Peter then gets out of the boat in the middle of this raging storm. I don't imagine he did the tentative outdoor activity. Oh. But he got out and he walked towards Jesus. All good so far. But then as he walks towards Jesus, he becomes aware of his environment. Spray off the waves. Jesus' clothes blowing in the wind. And then he begins to sink. And he cries out, Lord, save me. And Jesus is right there. It was a downfall there for Peter. But the teaching moment came when Peter was safe. Why did you doubt? Now the books that I looked at said it carries, the word doubt carries the idea of standing uncertain at two ways. Now it's dead easy to acknowledge Peter's lack of focus and faith. But how hard am I on myself and my choices when I want to fix my eyes on Jesus and follow him wholeheartedly in Belle Isle. A throwaway comment from the commentaries was this. Faith is not believing in spite of evidence, but obeying in spite of consequences. Faith is not believing in spite of evidence, but obeying in spite of consequences. Jesus and Peter then walk back to the boat and when they climb aboard, the wind dies down and the disciples worshiped him. Truly, you are the son of God. I didn't want to end on Peter's downfall of doubt, but on this, downfall of worship, they recognised in Jesus a man who could feed fish, who could control nature, who could rescue them, who was concerned for them and they wanted to worship him. So as we move into this coming week, Hope we'll be conscious of God's nearness and presence in our ordinary daily lives and seek to bring him our praise and thanks. So let's close in prayer, shall we? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you know us and see us and understand our situation better than we do. Help us to come to you, our great teacher, to receive your wisdom and guidance, that we may honour you in what we do. And Father, for those that are in difficult circumstances going through the mill at this time, may they know your loving presence and your supportive arm at this time. Guide us in the week ahead and bring us on Sunday to worship. Different circumstances that we would honour you in Jesus' name. Amen.
thanks for joining with us this week. It's been good to have you here. If you want to send a comment to us or send us an email, then we'll be glad to receive that and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Stay safe and God bless.